cities and towns across northern Ukraine are being freed by Ukrainian forces as the Russians redeploy to the east. One such city is Trostenets, northwest of Kharkiv, the site of pitched fighting until its liberation two weeks ago. Special correspondent Jack Hewson and videographer Ed Ram traveled there and found a city destroyed, its people reeling. The scars of battle in the recently liberated town of Trostyanets. Civilians try to resume daily life amid the ruins of their community. The town will take time to rebuild, but the wounds of trauma will take longer to heal. On the outskirts of the town, we meet Luba Kriyuchko, mourning the loss of her grandson. This is our cemetery. The 14-year-old boy and her two neighbors were killed as Ukrainian and Russian forces battled for the town just days before its liberation on March 26. I wish it could be just alive. It doesn't matter that the flat is ruined. We can rebuild it. But I wish my grandson was alive. That would be the best thing that could happen. Luba shows us the destruction to her home. She was hiding in her basement when the artillery round struck, but her grandson and neighbors were not so fortunate. As she emerged above ground, she discovered a horrifying scene. The woman was lying there without her head. Look at what has happened. Her head was blown off and all her bones blown apart there in the basement too. And here was my grandson's body. He did not run to the basement in time. We were in the basement and all of the body fragments got blown up in there also. On the way up to Luva's apartment, we meet Victor. His son was critically injured in the blast but when they tried to take him to hospital, they were stopped by Russian troops. We got to the checkpoint at the crossroads between the hospital and the school. We were stopped. They shot in the air and searched the car. I said, we're going to the hospital with my injured son. They said, ride, but we will shoot you in the back. You can go, but we will kill you. There is a giant tear in Luba's bedroom from the strike, but her grandson's death and the serious injury to her son have left a bigger emotional hole in her life. I don't know how to explain. It's hard. Hard, of course. He lived with me, the child. Until Luba finds the money to repair her apartment, she is sleeping on her neighbor's sofa. We had everything, everything, until some man got weird ideas in his head that he should destroy everything. That is all. Luba's home was struck as front shifted around the town's edges. When the time came, locals say Ukrainian forces took five days to retake Trostyanets. At the train station, a focal point of the battle, there is evidence of some of the fiercest fighting. This is, or perhaps was, the city's train station, and it's been used as a base by the Russians while they were here. You can see the scale of the fighting that's gone on here. There's so many pockmarks in the concrete. There's boxes of Russian armaments around. There were snipers positioned on top of this and seven tanks, according to locals. The Ukrainian military are already clearing the charred remnants of Russian artillery units emblems of an embarrassing strategic failure. The town was only ever expected to be a stepping stone to victory in Kyiv, but as advances stalled, Russia's presence in Trostyanets became an occupation. After a month in hiding, emotions run high. Residents are now reliant on humanitarian aid. They shot down people just for nothing, people that were just walking in the street with their children if they had not quickly run away. They went around with guns and kicked us out of our houses. I knew about the situation outside and did not go out. I was scared. You can see what happened to the city. They went into houses and beat people. They took and broke phones. They did what they wanted. They were barbarians. God says you should love your enemy. It is impossible. I only have hate. 
Locals say that the Russian troops were civil at first, but after a couple of weeks, the disappearances and atrocities began. Anger at Russian violations is pouring out across the liberated towns of the north. Luba's life has been changed forever. I told you that I have enough of this for the rest of my life. Until I am dead, this pain, the hate, nothing else, the hate and anger, that is what I feel. I wish I could kill them myself, those who came here, that is all. As more alleged atrocities are uncovered, Luba is one of many burying their loved ones across Ukraine, a country reeling from its loss. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jack Hewson in Trostyanet, Ukraine. And to note, our coverage of the war in Ukraine is supported in partnership with the Pulitzer Center.